my presentation is titled Brain Atrophy and Neurological Impairment in Williston's Disease, and I have nothing to disclose in relation to this work. Uh, we all know that Wilson's disease affects primarily the liver and the brain, and on magnetic resonance images of the brain, we often see bilateral hyperintensities in the white matter of, of basal ganglia brainstem, and these uh, hyperintensities often form characteristic constellations, such as the face of giant panda, which you can see here on the left. And of course, these findings are very supportive of the diagnosis of Wilson's disease. Uh, but brain atrophy is, is also very common in Wilson's disease, and it can occur in up to 70% of patients. And in clinical practice, we usually assess brain atrophy with the naked eye. So for instance, here you can see uh, um, images of, of two patients, and uh, one of them has enlarged cerebral ventricles, and the other uh, enlarged uh, cerebral sulci, and typically that's enough in clinical practice. Uh, but also one thing that we observe in clinical practice is that different patients have different degrees of brain atrophy. So, uh, for instance, here we can see that patient A has, uh, has no obvious signs of brain atrophy and brain volume appears normal whereas patients B and C do have some signs of brain atrophy, and still patient C has more severe brain atrophy than does patient B. And our question was to find out if uh, these different degrees of brain atrophy would be related to the severity of neurological impairment in Wilson's disease. And uh, just uh, as an example, please see how these three patients uh, do neurologically we assessed uh, the neurological impairment on the unified Wilson's disease rating scale on which higher scores indicate greater impairments. Uh, and as you can see, patient A with, with normal brain has a score of zero, which means that uh, he or she is asymptomatic uh, in terms of neurological uh, impairment. Patient B with moderate uh, brain atrophy has a score of 28 which indicates moderate neurological impairment, and patient C has a score of 46, which indicates severe neurological impairment. And based on these three images, we, we can see the pattern here, that the greater is brain atrophy, the more severe is neurological impairment. And uh, we studied this relationship in, in this work. Uh, we uh, analyzed data of 48 treatment-naive patients with Wilson's disease. This study was retrospective, but uh, all data were collected in a prospective manner. Uh, we assessed neurological impairment on the unified Wilson's disease rating scale. All patients underwent brain MRI and copper metabolism studies, including serum ceruloplasmin concentration, serum copper concentration, and we calculated the concentration of non seroplasmin bound copper, or the NCC, according to the standard formula, which you can see here. And the NCC is thought to represent uh, the fraction of free copper in serum, which might be directly toxic to tissues. Finally, we assessed the presence of Kaiser flasherings, which are corneal copper deposits, and this was done by an ophthalmologist in a slit lamp examination. We used uh, the CNX software to, to measure brain volume based on magnetic resonance images. And uh, this uh, software works by first extracting the brain from, from the skull image. And then it computes uh, the brain volume and uh, normalizes uh, brain volume for head size to, to, to account for the differences in brain volume that might be related to, to body size or head size. And the final output is the normalized brain volume, or the NBV. The same software measures the volumes of white matter, gray matter, and cerebrospinal fluid. And cerebrospinal fluid is marked here in, in yellow or green. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, so uh, these measures were also normalized for head, and, uh, head size. and. Uh, we were able to calculate the brain parenchymal fraction, or the BPF, which is uh, the ratio of normalized brain volume to the sum of normalized brain volume and the volume of cerebrospinal fluid. And uh, of course, higher uh, BPFs mean lower brain volume. 
um, sorry, uh, greater brain volume and lower brain atrophy. Uh, also, we measured the, the volume of deep gray matter, which we defined as uh, the total volume of future minor coded nuclei, globi pallidae, and thalami. And for that, we used the first software. And uh, these measures were also normalized for head size. And we uh, correlated um, neurological impairment scores with brain volumes and copper metabolism variables uh, to see if there were any. Uh, any significant relationships, and uh, for all correlations, we use the Spearman rank correlation coefficient, and this is what we found. Uh, first, we found that uh, neurological impairment as scored on the unified Wilson's disease rating scale, which you can see here in the x-axis, uh, correlated significantly with the normalized brain volume, so that patients with uh, more severe neurological impairment had lower brain volume. And because uh, brain volume is related to, to age and gender, with uh, women and older patients having uh, lower brain volumes, uh, we uh, corrected that correlation for, for these two, two factors, for, for sex and age. And after that, the, this, uh, this correlation coefficient remained uh, uh, highly significant, and it was uh, about <laughs> minus five, five something. So it didn't change significantly. And similarly, uh, neurological impairment uh, correlated with the BPF, and patients with greater impairment had lower uh, BPFs, so they had greater brain atrophy. And that correlation also remained significant after accounting for uh, sex and age. And uh, we found similar correlations between neurological impairment scores and the volumes of uh, white matter, gray matter, and deep gray matter. And based on these findings, we, we, we think that brain atrophy in Wilson's disease uh, is generalized. Uh, it's not limited to, to some particular brain structures, uh, like, for instance, uh, the basal ganglia, and that uh, this generalized brain atrophy uh, is related to, uh, to neurological impairment. Uh, next, we wanted to find out if, uh, uh, if copper metabolism variables would be related to, uh, to brain volumes that we measured. And we found that uh, the concentration on, of non plasmin bound copper, or the NCC here, uh, free copper, uh, was uh, significantly related to, to BPF. So patients with higher concentrations of the NCC had uh, lower brain volumes. And that correlation uh, was even more significant when we accounted for age and gender at diagnosis. Uh, we, we found a similar correlation between the NCC and uh, normalized brain volume, but it wasn't statistically significant. And in contrast, we didn't find any significant correlations between uh, serum serial plasmin concentration or uh, copper concentration and the volumes that we measured. Uh, we also compared uh, brain volumes between patients with or without Kaiser Fleischer rings. And uh, we found that compared to patients with Kaiser Fleischer rings, those without Kaiser Fleischer rings had significantly lower age and sex adjusted normalized brain volumes and lower age and sex adjusted BPFs. So uh, this indicates that clinically detectable copper deposition is associated uh, with, with greater brain atrophy. Uh, in conclusion, we, we think that brain uh, volume is a correlate of neurological impairment in Wilson's disease, and that brain volume is associated with, with copper overload. And in, in future, uh, brain volume could be used as a surrogate marker for clinical trials in Wilson's disease, but, but first we need to see if uh, in longitudinal studies, if, if changes in neurological impairment uh, correlate over time with, with changes in brain volume. Thank you.